coming up. You've been looking forward to this for weeks, haven't you? Just, been, just can't wait to get up here and talk in front of all these people, right? Yes. <laughs> I already talked about the shirt. He looks good, doesn't he? He looks very good. Yeah, he's got a good sense of style. Andrea, I can't even imagine. As a father of two, someone comes up to you and tells you that your child has cancer. I can't imagine what goes through you at that point. As the situation was playing out for you, and you knew what was coming, what is going through your mind, and, and how you know you, what Austin's about to go through? Well, when leading up to Austin's diagnosis, he was your normal little boy. For about a month straight, he had random fevers. He would cry when he took a couple steps. Um, he didn't have energy. He looked more pale. He just wasn't your normal little boy. So when we went to his pediatrician to just see what was going on, we actually just walked past her in the hallway. We didn't even get back to our room, and she told us immediately to go to labs because something was wrong. Um, his spleen, which you can't actually even feel, was his entire stomach. His liver was enlarged. All of his lymph nodes were full of cancer cells. Um, our pediatrician was on the phone with someone at Children's. We had no idea what was going on, what was going to happen. She was on the phone saying, should they come tonight? What do you want them to do? Um, she didn't diagnose him. She's just our pediatrician. She didn't have the heart, we found out, to tell us that Austin had leukemia. So the next morning, we ventured down to Children's in Minneapolis on February 8th, 2012. I actually was in the process of going to school for nursing or about to apply. We saw the word oncology in front of the clinic. I had no idea where we were went inside to the clinic, saw all the kids running around, still didn't phase me that Austin probably has cancer. I'll never forget, as we went into our room, the doctors were wonderful, but they get right to the point and they told us, um, they said, do you know why you're here? And we said, yes, to run more tests to see what's wrong with Austin. And I'll never forget when they told us, they said, yes, but your son Austin has leukemia. Sorry, it never gets easy to say in those five words. Um, but the biggest thing right away after telling us he had leukemia was they said we need to figure out his blood type. He needs a blood transfusion immediately. Um, since his hemoglobin was only 5.5, which his um, oncologist made a good <laughs> description of it at the gala, they said his gas tank was on empty when it should have been on full. So the first thing that they wanted to do and figure out was what his blood type was so he could get his first of many transfusions. So, so he's three, right? He was three at the time, yes. <laughs> you go to the first transfusion, where is the whole superhero element coming from? So the evening when Austin had his first transfusion, as the blood was coming in the tube, he literally started screaming, kicking, trying to pull the tubes out of his arms because he didn't know what the red stuff was that was coming in it. And Justin and I were very emotional and Justin literally put his emotions aside, jumped up and got excited and said, Austin, do you know what you're about to receive? And Austin just kind of looked at him and said, no. And he said, superhero blood. And Austin turned his crying from to a smile and he said, superhero blood. And Justin said, yeah, you're a superhero, and only superheroes can get superhero blood. So that's where the superhero story came from. He gets that transfusion, and then he gets that transfusion, and what do you see? Within an hour of Austin getting the transfusion, or I think it took about an hour and a half for the infusion to take place, he literally went from a pale little boy to pink, had color in his skin, went from not even wanting to move or walk to, I think it was about 9.30 at night, he was running up and down the halls at Children's, and the nurses, I'll never forget, were like, well, shouldn't he go to bed? I was like, no, let him run. <laughs> you know, he hasn't had this energy. So that one simple blood transfusion changed everything for him at that moment. And if you could, I'd give Carol the microphone. Carol, it says you, you started donating blood in 1988, and it's since donated 48 gallons. I don't imagine you ever anticipated a scenario like this. What got you started? Actually, up until that time, I was just a occasional donor, but my sister got me started uh, talking about apheresis, and I said, what is that? She said, well, I, I go get platelets every so often. She was with another little company called uh, 
and read something or other. <laughs> anyway, uh, she got me started. I went down to Memorial Blood Center, and uh, the rest is history. It just uh, it adds up really fast when you can give a double uh, unit every uh, couple of weeks. So. Have you ever had an opportunity like you have right now where you're seeing the direct effect of something that you did, someone that you helped directly? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I, I've never dreamed that I would be chosen, you know, along with the four other donors that Austin's received blood from, but just to be chosen uh, to attend this event in the gala before to find the family that we met. Uh, very few people get that opportunity, you know, and we're really thankful for it. All right, Austin, you're sitting here, we're talking about you like you're not even here in the room, and I noticed you, you've been checking out the pictures. I did like the shot of you with the uh, superhero costume on. Uh, do you even remember going through that whole process? Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about what is it like to go through that? Is it scary? Really scary. Really? Tell me about it. Why is it scary? Or was it scary? Because you just don't know what they're doing or they're going to do to you? Yeah? And does it does it help that your dad started the whole thing with a lie? Yes. <laughs> just warning you right now, there's going to be more of it. Okay. So now Carol's sitting over there uh, a couple of feet away from you, and I understand you have a special name for him? Super Carol. <laughs> So what would you say to the people who are here today, um, you know, if they've got a choice to make whether to give blood or not give blood, what, what would you say to them to get them to maybe do that, roll up their sleeve and donate? You should donate. <laughs> it's a good thing. Anything else you want to talk about? How are your grades? <laughs> okay, we'll talk. <laughs> My kind of guy. All right, um, the folks in this room today have all help coordinate blood drives. And, and what do you want them to take away from your story, Austin's story, to get them to continue the work that, that got them into this room today? Um, what you're doing is you are saving someone's life. Essentially, not just the person who's donating the blood as the superhero, but all of you here are heroes. Amen. All of you are heroes. Carol. Forty-eight gallons in the books. Don't tell me you're going to stop anytime soon. As long as we keep going. Yeah. And what's it like to be a member of this fraternity, this group that uh, that does what you do? Well, it's a great family to uh, belong to, and uh, just meeting Austin's family and going out there for his uh, blood drive last summer. Uh, who knew that somebody could have a blood mobile come right out of their house and uh, put on quite a party and they got over 50, gallon, 50 uh, units of blood that day. Anyway, uh, I just know that, you know, for me it's easy being an old truck driver and I can drive the 20 miles down to Plymouth to cover a couple of weeks. And, uh, but for a lot of people, they either can't or, or won't for some reason drive more than a few miles. So they're lucky to have you people to set up the blood drives in the local community, at the churches or wherever, make it so much easier for them. And without you uh, doing that, they probably wouldn't spend the time and the effort to make the longer drive. Thank you. I want to say thank you to both of you. Yeah, please.